I'm pleased to be able to give an update on our progress in delivering climate change mitigation strategy. The United Nations has stated that climate change is a defining issue of our time and that urgent action must be taken now. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, <coughs> the IPCC, report on climate change in 2018 found that limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees would require rapid and far-reaching action within 12 years if we are to avoid catastrophic global impacts caused by climate change. As a globally responsible nation, Timbal previously agreed Climate Change Mitigation Strategy 2016, outlining our steps towards the 2050 target to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 80% to the 1990 levels. Today, I'm announcing the launch of a consultation on interim targets and options for possible inclusion in a new climate change mitigation strategy 20 to 2030. Government has been working closely together to bring forward coordinated strategy, policy and delivery for a range of actions necessary to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. The new climate change mitigation strategy is supported by the DOI motion on low emissions later today for surface transport and electric vehicles and Manx Utilities reporting on how they will deliver future home generation feed-in tariffs, electric vehicles and electric heating for buildings. Mr Peake was member in DEFA with responsibility for the previous climate change mitigation <coughs> strategy. When published in 2016, it was acknowledged that a significant challenge was faced with reducing our greenhouse gas emissions during the transition to a low carbon economy. The focus in the Action Plan 2016-20 was to improve property energy efficiency and reduce the role of fossil fuels in both property heating and transport whilst reducing demand wherever possible. It was explicit that the strategy would result in an increase in electricity consumption, which in the short term would be met from the existing gas power station, then subsequently would be met from low emission and sustainable sources to complement existing facilities. In many ways, reducing our emissions by lowering our energy consumption saves money, often makes it more comfortable, healthy and profitable. Therefore, I strongly believe that energy efficiency and emissions reduction <coughs> is a win-win for us, providing we are sensible about how we go about it. Although much work is still to be done, I am pleased to report on the progress of Mr Pete's five-year action plan, where we have ongoing or completed 30 of the 35 actions. We will continue to deliver this action plan, which lays the foundation to enable further progress in reducing emissions in later years. More recently, we have launched an energy efficiency scheme to provide education and promotion of advice to assist households to reduce their energy consumption. We have also worked closely with partners in the distribution of free LED light bulbs and energy efficiency grants to low-income households. My department will shortly be consulting on a community single-use plastic reduction plan as you will be aware, in addition to pollution, plastics also make a significant contribution to global greenhouse gas emissions. My department has previously consulted on changes to the building regulations and I will be bringing forward changes in the next few months to further improve the energy efficiency of buildings. It is important to acknowledge that around 80% of the homes which we expect to be used in 2050 have already been built. So we must focus on existing as well as new build housing stock. It, we will need to both improve energy efficiency in our properties and reduce our usage of fossil fuels. Poor thermal insulation is responsible for significant building heat loss and therefore achieving a higher level of thermal insulation will be a priority. I am pleased to be able to announce that we will be launching a competition to create the most cost-effective solution to retrofit properties to achieve near zero emissions. Energy efficiency surveys can rectify simple draft exclusion or ventilation problems and provide prioritised recommendations for cost effective home improvements to improve energy efficiency. I'm also play, pleased to be able to announce we will be seeking expressions of interest from the public for participation in a trial to provide air tightness surveys for a comprehensive range of house types. My department supplies biomass wood chip, which is locally sourced, sustainable fuel product. This autumn winter season has seen the highest tonnage of biomass fuel used to date across the six government and local authority sites operating wood chip biomass boilers. 
The previous <coughs> Climate Change Action Plan 2016-20 is truly cross-government an initiative and uh, an initiative and uh, definitely <coughs> work closely with DOI and Manx Utilities to deliver this strategy. Following the successful trial of building passive houses at Janet's Corner, DOI have commissioned the construction of a further eight low energy public sector houses at Clank Bain. These properties show the local construction sector have the necessary skills to build energy efficient homes and safe households spending unnecessary money on energy bills. The active travel strategy approved by Timbald <coughs> shows that we are serious in reducing emissions in the transport sector by eliminating the demand and encouraging people to walk and cycle for their journeys with a purpose which also has significant <coughs> health benefits. We must acknowledge the global move away from petrol and diesel engines. With the move towards electric vehicles and other low emission vehicles, I am also delighted to support the DOI low emissions policy for surface transport and electric vehicles. Being a small island, we are ideally suited for electric vehicles. This will not only reduce our emissions, but improve air quality on the island. Max Utilities have also assisted with this transition to electric vehicles by providing a tariff to encourage EV uptech and the development of public EV charging network across the island for use by res uh, residents and visitors alike. I am delighted to support the report prepared by the Manx Utilities in response to the pricing review amendment, which includes positive steps to encourage electrification of heating and transport. In particular, I welcome the commitment to the installation of additional public EV charging points and a review of the EV tariff and charge for meter changes associated with this tariff. I also welcome the review of the heating tariff and trial installation of 50 heat pumps in a variety of different house types to encourage greater adoption of electrification of heating. Government must be seen to lead by example and encourage the adoption of heat pumps as a preferred form of public sector heating. The wider implementation of automated meat reading installations would facilitate the creation of a smarter electricity network, assisting in the connection of future renewable generations uh, to facilitate a greater uptake of electric vehicles. As I previously stated, today we have launched a consultation on interim targets and options for possible inclusion in a new climate change mitigation strategy 2020-2030. We must urgently do more to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions as previously reported in the IPCC Climate Change Report 2018. The consultation is comprehensive, works across departments and requires community buy-in. Much of what is being proposed in the consultation will require investment by government and also the public. <coughs> in addition to incentives, there will be greater regulation. This carrot and stick approach will require public acceptance. I'm sure you will agree that the new strategy shows clear leadership. Our focus will continue to be on energy efficiency and reducing the role of fossil fuels in both property heating and transport. When the current gas-fired generation of electricity comes to an end in, 20, uh, third, in the 2030s, we expect it to be replaced with sustainable, renewable generation. When this occurs, we will see a step change in reducing our emissions and benefit from the initial work in the property, heating and transport sectors. The Isle of Man is faced with an, ener an energy trilemma, <coughs> balancing energy security, affordability and minimising impact on the environment. This is common to all our neighbouring jurisdictions. It is therefore imperative that the cost-effective initiatives are progressed, or cost-effective initiatives are progressed, in order to limit the financial impact on Isle of Man residents. I hope members will value this update and I will return later in the year following consultation with a new climate change mitigation strategy 2020-2030. Thank you, Mr President. Honourable members, <coughs> standing orders do permit the posing of questions to the Minister <coughs> on his statement. However, this is not a debate and I will not allow statements to be made, but questions. Honourable Member for Douglas North, Mr Peak. Thank you very much, Mr President, and I would like to ask the Minister why he's chosen to make a statement rather than a debate on this important issue. Reply, sir. Thank you, Mr President. It, it's very simple, really. Um, this is a consultation, the launch of a consultation and an update. Um, we intend bringing the strategy to Tim World later in the year when we can have a comprehensive debate about the way forward and 
the strategy that we are proposing. With a question, Mr. Peake. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And so, the minister did he not want to hear the views of the members of Timwold? We, three years ago, we actually agreed on a strategy. Very little has, has been followed over the last two and a half years. Does the minister not want to hear the views of Timwold and have a debate? Minister, to uh, thank you, Mr. President. Yes, I do want to hear the views of Timwold members, and they are invited to respond to the consultation, like everyone. Uh, but I really want to uh, hear the views of the general public, uh, our youth and everyone else. So it's, it's a broad reaching, over 50 questions um, consultation um, and uh, very welcome. And I welcome the meeting with Mr Peake to discuss the same as the uh, author of the strategy that we're perpetrating at present. Mr Peake. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And um, as the, the Minister mentioned in his statement that he claims to have um, actioned or, or completed 30 actions of the present strategy, I would like to know how many is actually completed, <coughs> not ongoing. How many of those actions has the Minister's Department completed in the last two and a half years of the strategy? Minister to reply. Mr. President, as far as I'm aware, around 80% have been completed. Honourable Member for Ramsey, Dr Allenson. Thank you, Mr President. I'd like to thank the Minister for his statement. Will he accept that there is a lot of public interest in the environment, um, particularly from the student demonstrators? We're actually at this building on Friday, and I'd like to thank him for going and engaging with them and hearing their viewpoint. And very much they wanted action, um, which I, I think, and I certainly hope, his strategy will, will come up with. Would he also um, agree that part of the consultation is for major infrastructure changes? We're at a stage now where there are questions about extending the domestic gas supply to more remote areas and whether we um, eventually start to plan to stop the replacement of all oil-fired heating boilers and replace them with electric space heating. And will this be part of his consultation? Minister to reply. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Yes, there's certainly a lot of public interest uh, in what's going on with regard to uh, climate change uh, mitigation strategy uh, and the future. Uh, as you rightly pointed out, I'm very pleased to be able to engage uh, with the climate uh, uh, strike, as they call it, uh, on Friday. And I listened uh, with some interest and invited uh, members of that group uh, to the department to meet uh, when the uh, consultation is complete. It, it is quite poignant that it comes up at this stage debate later on uh, youth parliament and youth engagement uh, and uh, it's pleased to see uh, young people engaging. Um, the strategy I think will be very far reaching. It will include hard targets and uh, annual reporting which I think is what people want to see. Um, you are right, uh, we need major infrastructure changes over the next few years. Electrification is key to this. Uh, I note that the UK are talking about uh, banning uh, fossil fuel boilers in housing, new housing from 2025. That's something we'll be able to look at and also uh, when and if uh, we decide to follow suit with uh, diesel and petrol cars in due course. But the consultation will help inform public appetite for some of these things <coughs> and give us a direction of travel. Honourable Member for Onken, Mr Callister. Um, thank you, Mr President. I also thank the Minister for his statement this morning, um, but my, my concern relates around the improvement of property uh, energy efficiency, which he highlighted in his statement. In 2017, in this court, in December 2017, um, his department offered grants up to 75% but it did genuinely lack funding around energy surveys and loft installations. The Minister also uh, stated in that statement that 25% of, uh, Manx, of Manx properties lacked appropriate loft installation and that these also were related to the most vulnerable and the most low-income people on our island. Therefore, can I ask the Minister, as part of this consultation and part of the climate change immigration strategy in 2020-2030, that he seriously looks at introducing a scheme that actually enables all properties on the island to be um, loft installated in the future? Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, certainly, um, uh, properties will form um, a, a major part of our CO2 contribution, as it were. Um, 2050, uh, around 80% of the existing housing stock will still be there. 
Um, the department has uh, recently carried out, or is in process of carrying out, uh, an up-to-date housing survey, which I hope will identify um, some of the issues that you talk about in terms of loft insulation. Uh, but I should say that uh, our energy efficiency uh, scheme that we did launch was aimed at lower income uh, families. Um, sadly, the uptake has not been that great, uh, so we need to look at how we address this in the future. But if we're looking further to the future in terms of reintroducing grants to incentivise, if we look at the Scottish model, they have recently spent £350 million pounds on incentivising changes to 50,000 houses. Uh, I think that works out at around £6,000 a house. So if we're going to be serious about this, um, I, it, it's going to cost money. And uh, how you incentivise that and how we pay for that is part of the consultation, but it'll be part of the debate that this House has uh, when we come up with a mitigation strategy. I see the Treasury Minister looking at me. Smiling. <laughs> <laughs> there will undoubtedly be a requirement for money to incentivise some of the changes that are necessary, and we will not be able to shy away from this if we are serious about addressing the issues. Honourable Member for Council, Mr Henderson. Does the Minister acknowledge the words of uh, Sir David Attenborough earlier in the year at the International Climate Change Conference in uh, Poland, I think it was, in as much that he has now put governments of the world on warning that the uh, virtually, if we carry on the way we do, the end of the planet being predicted and is on the radar now if we don't start taking uh, increased action, as it were, to mitigate the uh, effects of climate change. I acknowledge his statement, Hector N. I welcome what he says, but the whole point of what Sir David Attenborough was saying and the students outside <coughs> of Tinwell last week, who I joined too, uh, was the fact to see increased action and visible results now and on an ongoing basis. Minister. Um, the Honourable Member may be pleased to know that uh, we had a representative uh, at a function with uh, Sir David Attenborough just last week, uh, substituting for an invitation to the Chief Minister. And uh, we apparently, feedback, uh, made a, a useful contribution to that meeting. And I acknowledge what has been said. Um, and I think the far-reaching uh, aspects of this consultation acknowledge how seriously we're taking this, but we, we need to take people on a journey. I, I need not only to convince you and, and uh, <coughs> various action groups that we need to take action, but we need to bring the public on board. And this uh, consultation is about that and uh, acknowledging that there are problems and we need to move quickly and as soon as the consultation is closed, rest assured, the department will be considering that consultation and a strategy will be developed uh, fairly shortly thereafter for debate in this court. Honourable Member for Ramsey, Mr Hooper. Thank you very much, Mr President. Uh, the Minister mentioned that there hasn't been a great take-up for his energy efficiency scheme. I, I might suggest that this is because the income threshold is £15,000 a year for joint applicants. Maybe that's a little bit low, and I'd like to ask if he'll be looking at that as part of his consultation, as part of his review. Uh, there was a statement he made during his statement about biomass boilers being in use and this being a great year for biomass. Uh, I'd just like to question the Minister on how much biomass is going to form part of any future energy strategy. I know there have been issues in the past uh, installing and maintaining and, and using. <coughs> Uh, and my third question for the Minister is surrounding the statement on energy security. There was a throwaway comment at the end about it being one of our key uh, issues, energy security. Can you please just expand on exactly what he means by energy security? Because for some people it will always mean having some form of our own generation, whereas others will be more than happy to rely solely on our interconnected cable. And I'd like to get a picture of what the Minister means when he talks about energy security. Thank you. Minister to reply. Uh, thank you, Mr President. Um, the £15,000 limit not quite as low as it seems. Uh, from what I understand, that would equate to a couple earning somewhere in the region of 30 to 40,000 pounds per year. Um, uh, I, I did address that uh, as a result of an earlier question um, in the Keys, I believe. Uh, with regard to biomass, um, there are question marks around some uh, biomass boilers and the particulates that they uh, produce, but it is a, a form of renewable energy and it's one that we have a, a, a lot of uh, on the Isle of Man and uh, could be exploited uh, to a greater extent. 
there were problems in processing and producing the wood chips. Uh, most of these have been solved now uh, with the government uh, buildings, and uh, the system seems to be working very well. It certainly works well at uh, uh, Tysoel and uh, Defa HQ. Um, however, I see that the real future uh, when it comes to um, individual boilers as being more to do uh, with air source or ground source heat pumps. Um, they are coming of age. They're still very expensive. Uh, the MU are going to uh, carry out a, a, a scheme with them and uh, the price will come down. So that may be the direction of travel or, or pure electrical heating. Um, when it comes to resilience <coughs> um, in terms of our own energy security, um, it, it's difficult to predict how uh, matters will progress, but I have a feeling that there's going to be a considerable mix of uh, community or individual generation and power storage. <coughs> the new generation of electric cars, which have very high capacity batteries, 50, 60 kilowatts, you can charge and you can discharge them into your household circuit or put that electricity back into the system. So it may well be that our next generation of cars will enable us to have smaller scale community generation and resilience in storage on island. Or there may well be um, a, a facility for storing, facility, uh, for storing energy in uh, large battery banks. Um, but I, I can't tell you what will happen in the next 10 years. Things are progressing so quickly. Um, but there, uh, I'm sure there will be solutions to the resilience issue in due course. Honourable Member for Council, Mrs Lord Brennan. Thank you, Mr President. Does the Minister agree that it's possible to show leadership and action without repeated consultation? And would he like to take the opportunity to make a correction on the Government News release of the 7th of March that stated that the new strategy for climate change mitigation 2020 to 2030 will go to Timwald on Tuesday the 19th of March. Minister to reply. Mr President, um, I'm not sure that I said the new strategy will come to Timwald. Um, I've always been uh, of the impression that we would get a statement as a result of the ongoing consultation. And uh, we have circulated in advance, um, uh, I think, uh, uh, a document that showed progress with uh, the 1620 uh, mitigation plan and how far we progress with that. Honourable Member from Middle, Mr Shimmins. Thank you, Mr President. I'd like to ask the Minister, how have the greenhouse gas emissions from the island trended over the last five years? And how do our emissions per person compare with the United Kingdom, Jersey, India and China? Minister to reply. Thank you, Mr President. Um, um, I do believe that the Honourable Member was uh, in attendance at uh, the presentation we made recently. Um, the situation with regard to uh, CO2 emissions um, in terms of um, our position in world ratings, as it were, is that we uh, produce around 10 tonnes per person uh, per year. That is about mid-table. Um, if you look at Australia and places like that, they are <coughs> very much higher than we are, um, and we are a little bit higher than the UK. There are, have been some quite big variations in the amount of CO2 uh, that we produced, mainly down to energy electricity uh, production. At times when we've imported electricity, um, CO2 emissions have gone down substantially. When we generate our own power, and I should add here that we also generate power that we send to the UK, which is counted as at the point of generation, but of course that power would be generated somewhere else, um, then our CO2 emissions go up. Um, with regard to the strategy that we're proposing, it will have hard targets in it, 2025 and 2030, and these will include targets for electric vehicles, and of course we are looking to the future 2030 plus when the power station, <coughs> both of our power stations, come offline and there will be a step change in CO2 emissions at that stage. Honourable Member for Douglas North, Mr Peake. Thank you, Mr President. And if I could just jog the Minister's memory, I think the briefing he gave us, it, it showed that the Alaman had increased CO2 output by 500% since 1990, and the UK had actually reduced by 38% since 1990. Um, but I would like to, rather than dragging the Treasury Minister into um, the, the Minister and, and going through a statement which shows a number of points haven't been reached, um, 
would the Minister agree that he's in a better position to actually work on things that he can influence rather than trying to blame or wait for other people to, to say no to him? Minister to reply. Uh, thank you, Mr President. Um, CO2 in toto has increased but this is partially due to the fact that we have 20,000 uh, more people living on the island. Um, so that is bound to increase our total CO2. What you have to look at is the median level of CO2 per capita, which is a better indication of uh, where we sit. Um, with regard to uh, uh, leadership and what we can do, uh, it, I'm not in the blame game and trying to blame the public uh, if we don't do things. But if we don't get the public on side, and I can't convince you as politicians uh, to come on the journey, uh, then I, I think I'm going to be in a very isolated position. It's going to make it very difficult for me to approach Treasury, for instance, to secure funding for uh, uh, grants <coughs> for future household improvements and uh, electric vehicles, and there will be a, a massive cost in infrastructure for this electrification. Um, people had pointed to my department and said, well, you've only got one electric vehicle at the moment, and I admit that we have. Uh, but if you look at the cost of electric vehicles, the specialist vehicles that we will require in my department, for instance, um, and then I talked to the MU about the charging infrastructure that's required to charge 40 vehicles overnight to be ready and serviceable for the following week, <coughs> you will see that there, there are uh, financial problems and uh, we need to get by in cross-government departments to make sure that we uh, are able to take forward a policy that will work in terms of climate change mitigation. Honourable Member, Mr Robert Shaw. Thank you, Mr President. Uh, a few questions for the Minister. Um, but but I, I, I don't apologise for asking the Minister again why he has this predilection for, for statements and questions rather than uh, full debates on a subject of such huge importance to us all. I think it's disappointing, and I would ask him to reflect on that. Two questions. He may uh, direct uh, for an answer. My, he may direct me to the, to the chairman of MU, but is he in a position to expand at all on his statement about air source heat pumps and, and how that's going to develop and the time scale? There must be people now maybe two or three years away from uh, replacing their gas or, or, or oil-fired boilers and will want to focus on this. And how quickly does he think that we're going to achieve installation competence and competition? And then finally, <clears throat> is he aware that there's a very important uh, climate change conference in New York in September? Is he going? Um, I understand from what I've been told that some very, very small jurisdictions are engaged in that important conference, as small as us, and are engaging in developing uh, target work and reporting systems with the UN. And of course, this is of particular importance to us with our biosphere status. Thank you, Mr. President. Minister to reply. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I don't necessarily have a predilection for uh, statements rather than debate relation document uh, to this uh, court uh, and debate should we debate the questions we're going to ask or, or, or should we wait until we have the results of the consultation and we've developed a strategy which then leads to a proper debate uh, an informed debate as to the direction of travel um, when it comes to air source heat pumps <coughs> um, they are developing the technology is developing very quickly and the price is dropping substantially. At the moment, they are not really competitive with the oil-fired or gas-fired boilers, but I anticipate, and if you're talking about replacement in the next uh, four or five years, that they will become so. And uh, the EMEA, you know more about this, and they're carrying out a, a, an experimental installation in 50 different housing types, from what I understand, to decide how well these uh, heat pumps uh, work and uh, obviously look at some of the installation problems. So that, that's work in progress. With regard to New York, um, it was not my intention to use a lot of CO2 to go to New York, um, but uh, I can inform the Honourable Member that we spend a lot of time working with British Irish Council and uh, other small jurisdictions, and uh, we actually hosted an Environment Minister's Conference here last year where we're talking about the issues that specifically relate to smaller jurisdictions and islands, uh, as well as the, the, the greater good. Uh, you, you may be 
pleased to know that uh, in June I'm going to Scotland and uh, I'm visiting several green energy projects including uh, Orkney where they are, have a, a lot of wind energy and they're using wind energy, the surplus, to turn um, um, water into hydrogen fuel. Honourable Member, Mr Callister. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just want to pick up again on the, the presentation that was given to Timwell members. I know the Minister this morning has said that there's, there's a big cost involved in this, but I hope the Minister will agree with me that we don't have to spend tens of millions of pounds. Small changes, such as ensuring that every property on the island is properly insulated, will be a major step in respect of the climate change mitigating strategy and to reach those 2050 targets. Will the Minister agree with that statement, please? Minister. Mr President, I have no problem in agreeing um, uh, with that statement. Um, as I said earlier, the housing survey will inform the situation in terms of uh, where we're at, um, because if you go back 30 or 40 years, most houses didn't have loft insulation. Um, we've moved on, and a lot of houses now have it, but the recommendation has gone from four inches uh, to probably six or eight inches, sorry, I'm talking in old money here, um, and uh, so it, it'll give us a snapshot of where we are and what we can do. And you are right, uh, things like uh, loft insulation are not high cost items, and there may be a, a methodology there uh, for incentivising that. Thank you. I have seven members uh, wishing to speak on my list. So will not uh, wish to be repetitive, I'm confident. Uh, Mrs Kane. Thank you, Mr President. Um, I thank <coughs> the Minister for his statement, but I do question whether leadership would have been to come forward with some strategies for implementing sooner rather than going out for a 50-question public consultation. But my two questions, um, if I may, he, he referenced the successful trial of building passive houses at Janet's Corner and the DOI commissioning eight further low-energy public sector houses at Clack Vane. <coughs> but buildings account for a huge and rising source of emissions, as he acknowledged. If new building is permitted without radical changes to building regulations in terms of near-zero emissions or passive house standards, is the island not constantly adding to the legacy problems of inadequately designed buildings and hence increased rather than reduced space heating emissions? So when will the Minister commit to higher standard of building regulations to encourage improved standards of air tightness in both public and private sector new builds, along with his incentives for retrofitting older properties? The evidence is already there. DEFA definitely needs to take the lead on that one, I believe. And my second question, the 2020-2030 plan coincides with the end of the crucial 12-year window of opportunity starting in 2018 that the IPCC says requires urgent action. If the reductions in his plan are achieved, what will this mean in terms of our emissions in 2030 as a percentage of the 1990 levels? In other words, what progress will have been made towards achieving the 80% reduction? Thank you. Mr. Boot. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Leadership, strategy, making changes without consultation. Um, government can't win, really. If we bring in changes without consultation, uh, we get complaint <laughs> and criticism. If we consult, we're, we're uh, criticised for consulting too much. This is something that is vitally important to the future of our island and the world generally. I think it would have been very remiss of me to bring forward a comprehensive strategy without actually consulting with our community. And that consultation has already led to um, the soft consultation before the real consultation has been issued, to some ideas being teased out and different mythologies. So uh, I think that consultation process is very valuable, and I think it's all about uh, getting community buy-in. It's a very important issue, and I, 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 leadership is one thing, but doing the right thing is, is another. Um, when you talk about Clack Vane and uh, going forward with building regulations, uh, we went out to consultation, dare I say, uh, last year with regard to building regulation changes, and uh, I did uh, uh, say in my statement that we are coming forward with new building regulations uh, later this year, and they will uh, be somewhat in excess of what we have at the moment. We have industry buy-in, the consultation process was very positive, um, and that will lead to improvements, not just in new building, but also in any changes, to, uh, extensions and what have you, uh, to the existing housing stock. Um, so uh, we are already in excess 
of England with our building regs, we will be further in excess when these new building regulations come in. Honourable Member for Aaron Michael, Mr Baker. Thank you very much, Mr President. Would the um, Minister agree with me that previously we started the journey, but today is a clear statement of intent of the importance of this issue, and that collectively, both as a community, we have to, we have to commit to addressing this climate change issue as well as taking individual responsibility and that actually how we respond to this is key to our broader international uh, re re reputation and that whilst there may be some quick wins and low cost solutions we have to be prepared to address those issues which are challenging in both financial terms and lifestyle terms and not pretend that the, there are all easy answers out there and, and finally would the minister uh, agree with me that one very tangible way of um, showing our commitment to sustainable global development will be to anchor the programme for government in the UN Sustainable Development Goal Framework. Minister to reply. Uh, thank you. Well, there's not a lot to disagree with there. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yes, it, it, it is a journey that uh, we need to share uh, collectively. Uh, the old saying goes, we are all in this and it's our world at the end of the day, we all need to do our bit. Uh, individual responsibility um, is very important. Uh, we've all got to start looking at what we do individually. And uh, part of the <coughs> education process uh, from government's point of view is to let people know what choices they can make that will improve the situation. A lot of the choices uh, that they can make will not only improve uh, uh, CO2 or, or, or the environment generally, but can be beneficial in cost terms. Um, so it's not all, uh, uh, <coughs> there is some carrot there. Uh, internationally, uh, I think it's important that we are seen to be doing the right thing. We are the only nation with full biosphere status, so eyes are on us uh, for the future. Um, we rate fairly highly in, in terms of most things that we do, but that doesn't mean we should rest on our laurels. And in fact, uh, just last week, we finished uh, the second uh, workshop with stakeholders uh, developing a vision for the biosphere with community and stakeholder buying, something that we've been encouraged to do uh, by UNESCO. And as for the sustainable development goals, I, I think they would be uh, usefully adopted as part of our programme for government and uh, this is discussion that's ongoing. In fact, we, we meet most of those goals at the moment, but there are some that are a, a little bit uh, more spurious. But it's a, it's a sensible idea and one that I think uh, is a useful uh, target going forward. Honourable Member for Council, Mr Henderson. Will I acknowledge the importance of the global call earlier this year that Sir David Attenborough made and this morning on BBC News the chair of the English Environmental Agency has given strong words of caution with the effects of climate change and to that end would he agree that I welcome his commitment and strategy excellent but will he agree that given the um, calls for concern that it's time to step up the speed of the journey he's inviting us on and to start actually seeing actions uh, come to fruition. Uh, thank you Mr President. Um, I, I can only echo what I said before with uh, regard to Sir David Attenborough. Um, we were already going in the right direction, perhaps the 2016 20, um, 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 strategy was not ambitious enough, but at that particular point, with, uh, to be fair uh, to the previous administration, um, we hadn't had the latest IPCC report. Um, I think uh, you will find, as a result of the consultation that's going ahead at the moment, we will step up to the challenge. Um, I, I, I won't preempt what will come out uh, in the new strategy, but uh, I, I suspect you will see a step change in, in what we've been doing to what we're going to do. Honourable Member for Council, Mrs Masker. Thank you, Mr President. Um, I would welcome uh, the, the Minister's statement today and his Department's commitment to this strategy. Um, I wonder if you might clarify uh, three matters, actually, for me. Um, first of all, with regard to bringing forward new building regulations, uh, might his Department look at a balanced approach to energy-efficient materials as as we are all aware that some of these materials are high in petroleum content and uh, it actually imbalances if you're, if you're insulating your house but you're filling it full of 
of petroleum-rich insulating materials. Uh, I would ask that he, his department might look at more naturally-based materials that could do a similar job. Um, secondly, with regard to... Um, uh, uh, he has uh, announced that his department will be going um, out to tender on air tightness surveys. Um, my experience is that where a property is made too airtight, it can then introduce other problems such as condensation. Mm -hmm. And so part of this exercise would be education and uh, in terms of balancing the use of a heating system, ventilating your property appropriately, but also uh, not, not uh, having 20 showers a day and drying all your washing on the radiators. It's all part of a balanced education approach. And thirdly, this is a small matter, but when his department issues the monthly um, uh, comparative table on domestic fuel, um, I notice wood chip is very low. It's the lowest cost on that table. But could he uh, let me know whether that includes transportation to sites? Because my past experience when I've asked his department was that actually it didn't include the delivery costs. <coughs> and so that actually puts up the cost so the table is not quite representative as it, as it maybe should be. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Reduced the test the boat. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the new building regs, and I, I, I'll talk about uh, num number one and number two question really, um, in terms of air tightness. Um, when we were reviewing the building regs, um, there is a level at which um, you have to introduce mechanical ventilation into properties to stop condensation. Uh, the new building regs will stop at that level. Uh, because uh, at the time it was felt after consultation um, that it would be uh, a step too far to start forcing people to put mechanical vent ventilation in their whole house uh, rather than just the kitchen or bathroom areas where it's traditionally fitted. Um, so we are only too aware of the problems with consultation and air tightness does bring with it uh, problems in that respect and that's a, a matter of education when you're carrying out these surveys to see just how airtight your property will be. Uh, when it comes to insulation material, yes, a bit of a conundrum there because you are correct. Some of the insulation material is manufactured using uh, hydrocarbons and uh, there, there is a, a sort of a balancing act to be had. There are alternative materials on the market and I think it is not for, for the department to mandate what materials people use. Um, uh, I think we would be setting a precedent if we did that in government, start recommending people to use specific products. Uh, but certainly I think the public will become more aware of what materials are, shall we say, eco-friendly in terms of what they're doing. Um, when it comes to the monthly table um, for fuel, um, I can't confirm or not whether transportation is included. Um, sorry, uh, if you want me to come back to you later, I'm happy to do so. Honourable Member for Middle, Mr Shimmons. Thank you, Mr President. When, when I heard that the Minister was going to make a statement today on climate change, I asked him to include climate change targets for this Parliament. I suggested this would demonstrate to the public that he was going to take action. Um, I'm disappointed that he's not set targets for the next three years. Why is this? Minister? I'm not sure whether I heard that correctly. If I may ask the Honourable Member, are you saying that there will be no targets for the next three years? Yes, that's my question. But why are there no climate change targets for the next three years? Um, I think the answer to that is, uh, A, we should wait for the consultation to come back to see what people want. But if we're looking at uh, trends and setting hard targets, I've already indicated that it will be 2025 and 2030, but with annual reporting therein. So um, setting targets doesn't necessarily mean that you achieve something, particularly if you have to set targets that uh, are, are not uh, realistic. Uh, the 2025 target is realistic and the 2030 target is realistic, and all these things take time. It doesn't happen overnight. Chief Minister. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Does the Honourable um, Minister agree with me that CO2 emissions comparisons need to be fair? Otherwise, it damages the argument of those like myself who strongly support climate change mitigation. We've had a number of people quote carbon, uh, CO2 emissions for the island, whereby not taking into account the significant volume generated for sale to the UK and therefore 
those percentages should not be used when comparing apples with apples. This is comparing apples with pears. And I think if you use misleading information, then you will damage those people who do not support um, what I think this entire House wants to achieve. Uh, and, and therefore, it's incredibly important that when you look at figures and members use figures, they use them fairly and not bias. Otherwise, it will cause a lot of problems. Would the Honourable Member not agree with that? Uh, thank you, Mr President. Yes, I, I do agree. And uh, there's statistics and damn statistics, and it's very difficult sometimes to determine what is correct. Um, the actual uh, situation with regard to CO2 on the island, there is a displacement factor, which I alluded to um, in uh, uh, earlier uh, answers. And as much that we are generating for the UK, well, that power would have been generated in the UK anyway. Um, so that CO2 would have been produced. So we have to be very careful about how we interpret uh, uh, statistics. And it can be off-putting uh, to people who, who are on the cusp of, of buying in if we suddenly start uh, making things look worse or better, we need to be fair about how we approach the situation and present a picture that, that people will be able to buy in. Honourable Member for Douglas North, Mr Peake. Thank you very much, Mr President. I, I think I've heard a lot now. Let's um, get a figure. Let's take out the figures that we don't want and just get a figure that we actually do want. That, that, that's uh, incredible. They were the figures that DEFRA actually provided at the briefing last week. I think the frustration that's felt by members is the fact that we started this process, we, we, we till agreed on this two and a half years ago, the strategy that was agreed, it hasn't been delivered good enough, and we're now back at a consultation. That's the frustration that we've got. We could have had a debate on, on the progress of the strategy, that would have been excellent, wouldn't it? But no, we're back at a consultation, starting again, and the frustration order, is... Mr. <laughs> Mr. President, are we getting a question here? The question is, when will the Minister take responsibility and actually start delivering on what Tim Wald asked for two and a half years ago. Minister. Thank you, Mr. President. I think I've taken full responsibility for delivering uh, your earlier programme, and um, we've done reasonably well with that. I don't think it was ambitious enough in retrospect. I'm sorry to say, <laughs> it's your programme. Uh, we're stepping up now, and uh, 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 I've already discussed why we're not having a debate about the strategy, because the strategy hasn't been developed yet, because we're consulting. So once we've consulted, there will be a full debate in this House, or in this Court, uh, when you will be able to bring forward your views. But in the meantime, please, Mr Peake, come to us and tell us what your ideas are. Mr President, will Member Ramsey, Mr Hooper. Thanks very much, Mr. President. I just wonder if the Minister could confirm that those targets he's mentioned are actually included in the consultation document, so they are going out and asking people what they think of his proposed targets. Uh, my question actually is about the consultation itself, uh, <coughs> assuming that this is an online consultation. Uh, we have had some issues recently with another consultation that's currently live where there hasn't been the availability to get a paper copy of that, and I'm just wondering if he'd ensure that there is at least available for <coughs> off a paper copy on request and not suggesting we farm out hundreds of these paper copies around the island at least so there is one available if <coughs> they can get a copy of that in, in hard copy thank you mr uh, thank you mr president yes the targets are alluded to in the consultation so people are aware of them um, with regard to the consultation being online you are correct um, it is online um, but uh, we'd be happy to make paper copies available uh, i think it's a pdf file so you can probably run it off anyway I'm going to take two more supplementaries of members who are on my list. Uh, we will be having a debate in due course. Uh, I suggest the subject has been well aired this morning. Uh, Mr Shimmins. Thank you, Mr President. Is the Minister aware that a meeting was held in Kenya in October of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association looking at the role of small legislators combating climate change? At that meeting, Eric Solheim, the Under Secretary General of the United Nations, stressed the unique opportunity that climate change presents to create new jobs. He highlighted the solar power industry and sustainable tourism. The Minister has highlighted a few times today the difficulties and cost secrecies. Will he also focus on the excellent opportunities that this presents our island? Minister. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Yes, I'm aware of a, a number of organisations that uh, have discussed or, or um, talked uh, in detail about uh, 
um, climate change in small jurisdictions and large jurisdictions. And uh, I said earlier, uh, British Irish Council, we engage in uh, all of their functions and they have a very strong environmental lobby. And I've attended, uh, I think in the last year, three meetings uh, to discuss various uh, environmental impacts. And we held our own environmental ministers conference here uh, last year. Um, uh, we buy in and we monitor what's going on uh, worldwide and uh, it is my intention within the department that we will follow best practice and you are right there are opportunities as well as challenges um, and uh, new jobs may well result from different technologies different mythology and uh, that that will happen in the future it's not going to happen overnight and i think there's an element of people that think we can make these things happen next year or the year after. Technology is developing all the time. We're monitoring that. The strategy will shadow that or inform and drive that change. Um, but uh, we need to let technology develop alongside what we're trying to achieve. And whether that uh, improves uh, employment or not will be something we'll look at in the future, but I'm sure it will. Finally on this item, Honourable Member Mr Thomas. Thank you, Mr President. Does the Minister agree with me that yeah. um, his, full participation, <laughs> his full participation with Enterprise, Treasury, DOI, Cabinet Office in the Environment and Infrastructure Subcommittee of Council of Ministers has been very helpful in developing this cross-government strategy, this cross-government consultation and the action that's being proposed later on today for debate and decision in this Honourable Court. Secondly, would the Honourable Minister agree with me that there's a very... Uh, would, he, would he comment on the change from climate challenge the name of the strategy for the last administration to climate change for this administration. And thirdly, will the um, Honourable Minister confirm that um, he's fully cognizant of the digital inclusion policies of um, Isle of Man government and therefore not print too many copies of a climate change <laughs> consultation? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Well, I'll start with the first, uh, the last first. Uh, yeah, we will try not to uh, print too many copies, and I'm sure most people um, are, are are nowadays online. So I think most of our responses will be online. Um, we, we changed from uh, the challenge to mitigation in, in the latest consultation because we we know that change is happening, and so now we've got to look at ways of mitigating that change. So that, that's why we've changed the, the heading headline, as it were. Um, and yes, uh, cross-departmental uh, working on this is essential and it is happening. And uh, I acknowledge the work that we do in uh, the Environment and Infrastructure Committee, talking together, talking about our different strategies and bringing the threads together. It's very important that we do that. And uh, that's all about uh, government, but also, as I said earlier, it's about getting community engagement as well.